Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Walters with Washington Tractor at our Linden, Washington location. And today we're going to take a look at the difference between the John Deere 1025R and the Kubota BX2370. So right out of the gate, we come right to the very front of the tractor. And what's the first thing we see? We've got a larger bucket on the John Deere 1025R. 53 inch bucket compared to a 49 inch bucket. We also have a bucket level indicator on there to show when your bucket's level compared to a small flat plate on the top side of the bucket to have a visual for your Kubota. Now Kubota talks about their long curved frames that they have on their, their loader. Puts that loader out pretty far in front of the tractor. Take a visual look there. We're almost a couple feet out from the nose of the tractor to the front of the bucket. John Deere does not use a curved frame design, but does tuck that loader in closer and tighter to the tractor. It's an easier way to lift. It's easier to lift something when it's close to you here than it is to try to lift something when it's all the way out here. Same premise lies with loaders. Also, John Deere uses the H120 quick park loader on the John Deere tractor. About 20 seconds, you can have this loader completely removed uh, with no tools. Compared to the LA243 loader on the Kubota, um, which does require many steps on and off the tractor to be able to remove the loader. Moving from the loader, we come to our materials. So the John Deere uses a polymer material for their hoods. It's extremely strong and tough. In fact, you can beat on it pretty good and not have any problem breaking. Now Kubota likes to talk about their all metal hoods that they use. You know, very strong and tough. But if I did the exact same thing I did on this hood, that on the Kubota hood that I just did on the John Deere, we'd have a much different looking hood than what you have on that John Deere over there. So even though they've got metal and we've got a polymer, I'll tell you, that polymer is tough. So coming back to the uh, main operator's platform of the tractor, um, you can see right out of the gate, John Deere has full tilting steering wheel. Also has a full suspension seat with armrests. Now Kubota does put armrests on their seat, but it is non-suspension and the tilt is not, or the steering wheel is not tilt. Also, if you look where their loader joystick's at, you have this long loader joystick that's mounted off the uh, central steering column of the tractor. So it's very far up and away from you. Compared to where on the John Deere, we have fender mounted loader controls. Nice and convenient, right here at your hip, real easy to operate. Full non-skid surface, everybody's got that. Kubota's got that and we've got that. But when it comes to making your tractor go forward and reverse, John Deere has their exclusive twin touch pedals, forward and reverse, compared to Kubota's fancy treadle pedal system. We've all heard about treadle pedals. So you've got your forward pedal up here, your reverse pedal back here. Problem being is that your heel is never gonna be on the ground. You have to lift it up to go back to reverse, then you have to pick your foot back up to bring it back up to forward. Your heel is always ground, on the ground on the John Deere, moving back and forth, making it very easy. Let's look at a couple more things on the Kubota. So the Kubota uses a two-speed transmission, just like John Deere does, um, but they have their levers here with a lot of other levers all placed around in this area. So not only is your two-speed lever here, your four-wheel drive levers here, and your hitch control lever is here. They use a selective control for their hitch, which means you have, or I'm sorry, a position control for their hitch, which means you have a down, a center, and an up. If you come over and look at the John Deere, the only thing that we have on this side of the tractor is our selective control. So selective control, we have numbers one through nine, and you can release your uh, lock, put it in place, come down, come back to the exact same spot every time. So if you're box blading or mowing, you're knowing you're coming to the exact same spot, not just a centralized position. Four wheel drive control lever is over here, but your range is over on this side. So we're not so cluttered into one area of the tractor. So we come back over to the Kubota, we're gonna look at the left side of the tractor. Left side of the tractor has our PTO engagement, which is a manual PTO engagement. You got to drop all the way down into place. And then you have your PTO selector. So you have the option for a mid PTO, a mid and rear, or a rear, just like the John Deere. But with ours, your PTO is live and independent, and it's right up here on the dash. Flip the button, PTO's on. Push the button off, PTO's off. Some nice, easy features that are available on the John Deere 1025. Coming back to the back side of the tractor, want to have some place to store your tools, store your hitch pins. 
store other items, gloves, these things that you need when you're when you're operating your tractor. Comes standard with the John Deere toolbox on the back here. Look on the back of the Kubota. There's no toolbox, no real hanger for our uh, top link. So our top link's just kind of hanging down there into place. And then again, we're still running those metal fenders on here, easily dentable um, and expensive to replace. So overall. If we take a look at the two tractors, you can really see where the John Deere has superb loader, better built materials, nicer suspension seat, tilt steering wheel, compared to the Kubota tractor with a larger loader, metal material, non-suspension seat, and uh, non-tilt steering. The choice is yours, but I think you can see which one is clearly better. Come on down to the Washington tractor, take a look at the John Deere, drive it, and own one today.